Campaign 2018 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, Marshfield Clinic Health System, AARP Wisconsin, and Campaign 2018 partner Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Josh Call of Madison is a Democratic candidate for Attorney General. Josh, welcome to Wisconsin Eye. Thanks for having me. I get all your press releases. I get the Democratic Party press releases, and I'm aware of all the issues that you could cite, but I'm asking you top issue in your campaign for Attorney General. I think we need new leadership in the AG's office when it comes to fighting crime and getting justice for Wisconsinites. Um, you know, our current AG has mishandled Wisconsin's backlog of untested rape kits. Um, you know, we received millions of dollars to test those kits in his first year in office. And after he had been there for two years, only nine of the kits had been tested. Um, he said that there was no backlog, which PolitiFact found to be pants on fire false. He claimed that hundreds had been tested when only nine had. Um, you know, this should have been a priority for our Attorney General from day one. And the delay has meant that there's been a delay in justice for survivors and that people who have committed a dangerous offense have remained on the streets longer than they should have. Uh, and that's not the only area where we need new leadership when it comes to fighting crime. You know, we have increased delays at the state crime labs, for example, with the testing of DNA evidence. Our opioid epidemic continues to get worse. worse. Our meth crisis has exploded. Uh, and I think we need to do more on school safety. Um, so those are some of the issues that um, you know, we need to address when it comes to fighting crime. Yeah, thanks for that overview. I want to come back to the rape uh, testing. Isn't it progress, though, that m the backlog is cleared up, Josh? So there, there has been some progress made, and, and finally we've completed testing on the kits, although there are still a number of kits on which we're awaiting confirmed testing results. So that, that is a good thing. Um, but this announcement should have been made much earlier. Um, you know, as, as I mentioned, there were only nine kits tested in Brad Schimmel's first two years in office. Um, you know, other jurisdictions that got grant funding the same time that we did made progress faster. In the first two and a half years after grant funds were received, uh, Portland had tested three times as many kits, Nevada had tested twice as many, and so what that has meant is a delay in justice. Um, and the other thing that's important to remember here is uh, there's still a lot more work to be done because where there are DNA hits, we need to ensure that those hits are fully and thoroughly investigated and as AG, that's what I'll make sure happens. That's a ver this is a very important issue. I want to stay on it a little bit. So if you're elected in January, what new protocols, what new orders are you going to issue dealing with rape test kits? So in terms of the kits that have been tested, um, first we need to make sure that we get confirmed testing results on all of the kits as quickly as possible. Um, and then we need to make sure that where there are hits, as I mentioned, that we fully and thoroughly investigate those so that survivors don't have to wait even longer for justice than they already have so that we can pursue cases um, where there are cases that, that can be pursued. Um, but we also need to make sure that this never happens again. So we need to make sure that there are clear protocols in place so that law enforcement agencies around the state know when they need to submit kits for testing. As AG, I want to bring some clarity to that issue. Uh, and then there's the, the other issue, the broader issue of other uh, delays at the crime labs. We need to make sure that we know exactly what resources are needed. I, I as AG, would like to do an audit to see exactly um, what we anticipate delays being going forward, how we can address the delays that we're currently facing, um, whether we should invest in new technologies, and then go to the legislature and say, this is, uh, these are the steps that we need to take to address these delays and ask for the funding that we need to finally address them. So do you think our crime labs are understaffed? And if so, would you ask for increased staffing if you're AG submitting your 2019-2021 budget? It certainly appears that they're understaffed. It's hard to come to any other conclusion given the increasing delays, but that's what the audit uh, would do is look to see whether we need additional resources, um, what kind of resources we'll need going forward. And then um, as AG, you'd be making the request for additional funds that we need um, based on what the results of that audit show. Part of this debate um, is also dealing with salaries. Do you think our DAs and assistant DAs are not paid enough? I think that our assistant DAs need to be paid more, yes. Okay. Um, the Office of Solicitor General was created during uh, 
Mr. Schimmel's first term. Would you abolish it? No, what I would do is change the way that that office operates. And, and let me just sort of step back and we'll talk a bit about what this office has done under Brad Schimmel. Um, this office has been involved in um, a series of partisan um, cases. Uh, they were, th this office has been, Brad Schimmel has been involved in challenging a law that guaranteed overtime pay, for example, to people who make between $23,000 and $47,000 a year. He was fighting against overtime pay for those families. I don't think that that was in the interests of Wisconsinites. This office has also been involved in challenging environmental regulations. Um, and it's part of the challenge, uh, it's part of the lawsuit that's seeking to invalidate the Affordable Care Act right now. So, you know, it's appropriate, I think, to have a Solicitor General, to have a person designated as the top appellate lawyer at the State Department of Justice. Um, but first of all, I don't think the office should be used for what I think are clearly partisan purposes. Um, and then secondly, I'd like to see the office integrated more um, with the, the, the rest of the appellate staff. Um, and I frankly think there are too many resources going to that office right now. I'd like to see some of those resources moved into criminal litigation and hopefully being used to address um, some of the challenges we face here in Wisconsin, like the opioid epidemic. If you're elected on day one, would you withdraw the state from the ACA lawsuit and some of these other federal issues that the Solicitor General has filed uh, on behalf of Wisconsin? Yeah, so the, the standard that I have for getting involved in a lawsuit or withdrawing from a lawsuit is, is the same, which is, first, is the policy or the, the federal statute that's being challenged, is it illegal or is it unconstitutional? And if the answer to that is yes, is this a uh, policy that's harmful to the interests of Wisconsinites? Um, and if the answer to that also is yes, then I think getting the state involved in a challenge to that policy makes sense. Um, where I would withdraw is where that policy, that standard isn't met. And so with the ACA challenge, uh, first of all, on the legal merits of the case, I think this case is extremely weak. Um, and secondly, this lawsuit is not in the interest of Wisconsinites, and if it's successful, it will be harmful to Wisconsinites. Um, it would mean that people with pre-existing conditions would lose protections that they have. Health insurance companies, once again, would be able to deny coverage to people with a pre-existing condition. It would mean that young adults would lose the guarantee that they can remain on their parents' coverage until they turn 26. Um, and the Congressional Budget Office estimates that if the major components of the Affordable Care Act uh, are repealed, over 30 million Americans would become uninsured. Um, so this suit is bad policy, it's, it's bad legally, and so as AG, I would seek to withdraw from it. The $100 million in school safety grants, how would you ad have administered that differently, Josh? Um, so first of all, I think that the funds should have been administered more quickly. Um, the, the funds were supposed to have been distributed before the start of the school year, um, and they haven't been, unfortunately. Um, I'm glad to see that there's finally going to be some investment in mental health programs at schools, which is something uh, that my campaign had called for. Um, but in general, I'm, I'm, I'm supportive of what is being done with the grants in the sense of upgrading um, school facilities to make them safer. The problem I have with this, um, this approach is that it's not a long-term solution to the school safety issues that we face. Um, what I would like to see is long-term funding for mental health programs in schools um, so that schools can hire counselors or mental health professionals um, so that we're not just giving some additional training to teachers, but rather bringing in people who are professionals in this area. Uh, and then, you know, we need some common sense gun safety measures here in Wisconsin. My, my opponent has suggested that we consider arming teachers. He's criticized gun-free school zones. Um, you know, I would stand up and fight against any effort to arm teachers in Wisconsin. I think we need to keep our gun-free school zones. Uh, and I think we need to pass a law that provides for universal background checks here in Wisconsin. Um, I want to read a statement issued by the Democratic Party. Under Brad Schimmel's watch, opioid-related deaths have spiked 43 percent, sentence one, sentence two. Emergency room visits for suspected overdoses have risen a staggering 109 percent, sentence three. While credible analysis suggested Big Pharma was to blame for the opioid crisis, Brad Schimmel looked the other way and refused to join bipartisan lawsuits to hold them accountable. That's not me, that's a Democratic Party spokeswoman. So um, I want to ask you, is that fair criticism of Attorney General Schimmel since he has emphasized the war on abuse of uh, opioids, heroin, methamphetamine? So I think we need to start responding to this epidemic like the crisis it is, and I don't think we're doing that right now. And the statistics bear that out. 
Um, there has been uh, an increase in opioid-related overdose deaths in Wisconsin. Um, the number of emergency room admissions for uh, opioid-related um, overdoses went up. I think that, that statistic you cited was from around mid-2016 to late-2017 or something like that. Thank you. Um, and, and it's clear from the numbers that, that we're not moving in the right direction. Um, so I think, first of all, we need to ensure that our enforcement efforts are targeting large-scale drug traffickers, people who are sending drugs across county lines, across state lines. You know, as a federal prosecutor, I worked in the narcotics division. I prosecuted large-scale drug traffickers, and I think that our focus needs to be on those folks so that we can reduce the supply of drugs like heroin and meth and fentanyl into Wisconsin. Uh, but I also think that we need to expand access to substance abuse treatment here in Wisconsin so that people who are addicted are able to get the help that they need. We don't have enough access to treatment right now. Um, and then I also think our AG, we, we need an AG who's going to be serious about holding the pharmaceutical companies accountable. Would you have sued them? So what I would, what I would like, I, I want to go back a step on that. Um, so first of all, our current AG um, I think has not demonstrated uh, seriousness about holding the pharmaceutical companies accountable. Um, it was late 2016 or early 2017 when I believe he said he didn't think the statute of limitations could be stretched back far enough to hold the pharmaceutical companies accountable. Um, now he's moved uh, a bit in, the, in what I think is the right direction. He's joined a multi-state uh, investigation into the pharmaceutical companies' practices. Um, I think that that's a good step, but he's also taken uh, campaign contributions from uh, political action committees for pharmaceutical companies. Um, and, and I so assume you have not. I have not, and I, I don't think that um, our AG has, has demonstrated that he's serious about holding the pharmaceutical companies accountable. What I would do as AG is, first of all, look and see where that multi-state investigation is. And if it is on track, it looks like there's going to be action that will be brought in the courts soon, um, so we can finally hold pharmaceutical companies accountable, um, then I would continue along that path. But if it's not going to lead um, to pharmaceutical companies being held accountable soon, um, then I would uh, take a hard look at going to court and potentially um, hold them accountable. Uh, there, there have been, I think it's 71 out of 72 counties in Wisconsin have now filed suit. Um, there are a number of states that have filed suit. Um, so it certainly looks like there are uh, claims that can be brought against some of the pharmaceutical companies. If you were AG, would you have let, would you have turned the Lincoln Hills investigation over to the feds? No. Um, so, you know, as a federal prosecutor, I was, I worked on cases where there were investigations that involved both federal investigators and local or state investigators. Uh, that is, that is common. Um, there's no reason that our Attorney General's office should have pulled out of this investigation. Um, it should have remained an active part of it. Um, and I, I called on our AG to rejoin the investigation a while ago at this point. I think he should have. Um, and, you know, this is a facility that's in Wisconsin. The juveniles at the facility are from Wisconsin. Our state has a strong interest in making sure that um, there's justice in this case. And our AG should have remained part of that effort. Um, which gets us into criminal justice issues. Do you consider the fact that Wisconsin's incarceration rate of African Americans is the highest in the nation part of the Attorney General's job description? I think all criminal justice issues are part of the Attorney so General's job description. So what should be done about that so I, incarceration rate? I think we need to look at reforms that do two things. Um, one is that keep Wisconsinites safe, that serve the interests of public safety here in Wisconsin, uh, and two, make our system fairer. Um, if, if there are reforms that meet that standard, um, those are reforms that I think we should look at. And I'll give you some examples of that. Um, I touched on before that I think we need to expand access to substance abuse treatment here in Wisconsin. If there are people who uh, are addicted to a narcotic and we can get those folks into treatment and get them rehabilitated and get them back on the street without an addiction, um, I think that that is in the interests of everybody involved. Um, it's in the interest of public safety, uh, and I think it's in the interest of the person who's addicted. Um, so I think by expanding access to treatment, um, we can get some better outcomes. Um, that includes expanding access to drug courts, for example. Um, that's another area, by the way. There are some diversion programs that we've seen in the state that have been successful. Drug courts, um, uh, veterans courts, um, potentially um, uh, you know, programs that, that veterans go to. I think those are good programs as well. Um, I think we should look at programs like that, um, potentially uh, diversion for mental health issues. Um, if we can get people the help that they need so that they're not 
you know, committing additional crimes, um, I think that's a good thing. Another thing I think um, that's an important reform is um, community policing and prosecution. Um, it's been successful where we've done it here in Wisconsin. Milwaukee had some neighborhoods um, where that was implemented, but I think that um, when law enforcement officers uh, know people in the community where they're working and vice versa, um, that that's effective both when it comes to um, fighting crime, uh, but also making sure that outcomes are as fair as they can be. Some of the Democratic candidates for governor said we should work towards cutting our prison population in half. Number one, do you share that goal? And number two, do we need a new state prison? Two of our prisons were built in the 1800s. So where are you on what some of those candidates said should be a goal of cutting our prison population in half? So I don't think that our goals should be about a specific number. I think they should be about having policies in place that meet those, that test that I was describing before. First of all, making sure that Wisconsinites are, are safe. Um, and secondly, making sure that, that if a policy is going to keep Wisconsinites safe and it's, and it's fairer than what we have now, that, that we uh, take a hard look at that and potentially enact that policy. Um, in terms of the prisons, I mean, ultimately that's a decision that's going to be made, um, I think, primarily with the between a discussion between corrections and the legislature. Um, but I don't think that we need to be uh, building new prisons in Wisconsin right now. I would rather see our money invested um, in other places, like some of the solutions that I was talking about, like expanding access to substance abuse treatment. Um, part of this debate includes whether we should legalize recreational marijuana or medical marijuana. Your position? I think that we should legalize medical marijuana in Wisconsin um, for a few different reasons. One is, there are people who are suffering from serious pain, um, and I think it's clear that medical marijuana can provide help to those folks. Um, it would also be a good source of revenue for the state. Uh, and then there are some studies indicating that where medical marijuana has been uh, legalized, that that has helped with the opioid epidemic. Um, so I think there are a lot of reasons to move forward with legalizing medical marijuana. I'd like to see the state uh, do that right now. You're right that the next attorney general won't decide whether we need a new state prison, but part of the prison debate is whether we should send our inmates to private prisons. Do you have a position on that? I think we should not be sending inmates from Wisconsin to private prisons. Uh, you, you may have seen that Brad Schimmel suggested that he didn't see anything wrong with that. Um, I fundamentally disagree with that. I think that um, by sending prisoners to private prisons, um, we are sending them to an environment where there is less likely to be effective rehabilitation um, I think that there are more likely uh, to be problems that arise. Um, you know, and, and when we're talking about public safety, uh, rehabilitating folks who are incarcerated is important because the vast majority of people who are in prison are going to be getting out. And um, I don't want to undermine efforts to rehabilitate them, to have programs like drug treatment or job training programs. Uh, and I think that um, having that done um, in uh, in private prisons is a mistake. There's this fascinating federal case. Does the First Amendment include the right to use a 3D printer to make a weapon? Do you believe it does? No, it does not. It does um, not. You know, there are limits um, to what is protected under the First Amendment where there is a strong public safety interest. You know, there's the famous example, you can't shout fire in a crowded theater. The First Amendment doesn't protect that right. Well, you also uh, don't have the right to distribute blueprints uh, that can be used to make 3D printed guns. Um, this is an issue where I think RAG has really failed to stand up for public safety here in Wisconsin. Uh, you know, these blueprints, uh, the guns that they could make on 3D printers would be plastic guns that wouldn't be detected by a metal detector. Uh, they'd be untraceable. Uh, and any dangerous criminal would be able, who has access to a 3D printer would be able to make one of these guns. Um, we should, our AG should be stepping up to try to prevent uh, the distribution of these blueprints. Um, a number of AGs have, but, but our AG hasn't. Um, you know, I, I think that this is, this is frankly a simple issue and our AG should have stepped up to try to stop the distribution of the blueprints. The letter from the 61 former assistant attorney generals that um, supports you said that the environmental protection unit in DOJ had been cut. I don't know enough, so I've got to ask, is that true? And if so, has that hurt our environmental protections in Wisconsin? Yeah, so, so there are um, 61 uh, former assistant AGs who have endorsed my campaign for attorney general. 
Um, I think that that's a strong statement about from people who know the office very well. Did you try to organize them to do that? There were a number of former assistant AGs who were um, concerned about the direction of the department and took the initiative to, to get a letter together. Um, now, 45 of those folks signed on to this letter um, that I think start out, started out by saying something to the effect of, uh, there was DOJ is a mess. Um, and when it comes to the Environmental Protection Unit, uh, it is correct that that unit has shrunk uh, under the current AG. Uh, and and the, the bottom line is that the results um, are, are fundamentally different under this AG, even versus our prior Republican AG, J.B. Van Hollen. Under Van Hollen, uh, we collected over $3 million a year in fines from polluters. That's dropped to under a million dollars a year under Brad Schimmel. And it's not because pollution has decreased by two-thirds in Wisconsin. It's because we have less inf effective enforcement of our environmental laws here in Wisconsin with Brad Schimmel as Attorney General. So we have weaker environmental protections under the current Attorney General? Yes, that's right. And I, you know, I have a fundamentally different view uh, about what we ought to be doing there. I think that you know, there are serious environmental problems in parts of the state right now. In Kiwanee County, far too many families have to worry that when they turn on the tap, brown water is going to be coming out. You know, in Wisconsin in 2018, I don't think that any family should have to worry about the safety of the water that their kids are drinking. And when polluters break our laws and make a mess, I think that they should be held accountable. Does the Attorney General have enough autonomy? I ask because of this unique relationship with the governor that basically the governor has to approve. This, uh, can you explain it? Some Attorney General actions? Yes. Cle clear that up for me. Yes. Um, I think that the Attorney General does have enough autonomy. Um, okay. So when it comes to enforcing our environmental laws uh, or our consumer protection laws, for example, um, there the AG has autonomy. The AG doesn't need to get approval from the governor to move forward uh, with an action. Um, where the AG does need approval is if the AG is filing a lawsuit to challenge uh, a federal statute or a federal policy. Uh, there the AG either needs to get approval from the governor or from one of the houses of the legislature. Uh, to bring a lawsuit. But the, DO, the, the Attorney General does have enough auto legal autonomy. Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, certainly, as I'm sure that AGs think that they, should, they would like to be able to bring lawsuits challenging federal policies without um, getting that approval, but I think that the system we have in Wisconsin, the structure we have, is one that makes sense. Now, we've t uh, have you put any limits on who you're accepting campaign donations from? You said you're not getting any from Big Pharma. I mean, uh, have you put any limits on who you're not getting donations from? Yeah, I've, I've signed the no NRA money pledge, so uh, my campaign will not accept uh, campaign contributions from the NRA, uh, and we won't support, we won't receive campaign contributions from political action committees for pharmaceutical companies. Okay, we've gone through my list of issues. I want to give you a chance to surface any major issue in your campaign that I haven't brought up. Um, so one issue that um, I think we should talk about is the, um, the shortage of prosecutors here in Wisconsin. Um, you know, we are uh, significantly short of where we should be, and that's not in the interests of public safety here in Wisconsin. Um, one of the things I, I think our AG should be doing, and as AG I would do, is be a clear advocate for more resources for prosecutors around the state, um, because we have a shortage right now uh, that, that needs to be addressed. Um, there was a, a DA in Marinette County um, who resigned um, because he felt like the system um, was failing victims because of uh, the, la the shortage of prosecutors that we have. So that's an issue um, that I think needs to be addressed. Um, another important issue is consumer protection. Um, you know, we need an AG who's going to be a watchdog for consumers here in Wisconsin. I don't think we have that under our current AG. Um, you know, when Betsy DeVos rolled back protections for students who had been defrauded by predatory for-profit colleges, uh, a number of AGs spoke up but our AG did not. I think he should have. Um, and I think consumers should expect to have an, an, uh, somebody in the AG's office who's going to stand up for them. And that's not only important, by the way, for consumers. It's also important for businesses around the state that are doing the right thing, complying with the laws. Uh, it's not fair to them to allow um, you know, some bad actor to fail to comply with the laws. Um, those laws should be enforced. Can we use that as your closing argument, Counselor? <laughs> sure, thank you. Josh Call of Madison is a Democratic candidate for your Attorney General. The election is November 6. Josh, thank you so much for talking to Wisconsin Eye. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Campaign 2018 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association. 
Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, Marshfield Clinic Health System, AARP Wisconsin, and Campaign 2018 Partner Milwaukee Journal Sentinel.